Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to the Schubert Seminar. Uh, today we're happy to have uh, Professor Andrew Weber from uh, Warsaw telling us about the characteristic classes of p orbits in square zero matrices. Please go ahead. Okay, so thank you. Thank you for the invitation and for letting me present uh, my result. But before, maybe I have to say that this really, this period was not a good time for doing mathematics. You know, I, I woke up on Thursday morning and, I, you know, what, what happened and it was really the strange feeling like from some science fiction that a big European country attacked another quite a big European country and in fact bombs were sent to the places that I know I visited and also I know people living there and some bombs were really close to, to Polish border so that was and who knows what would be the next so that's really not I, I had problems with concentrating on mathematics but slides were prepared so I, 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 can, I can continue and uh, this is the joint work with my student Piotr Rudnicki uh, so about uh, characteristic classes of orbits of Borel group in square zero matrices. So this is basically for uh, GLN, but can be generalized to other types, uh, ADE basically. And uh, there is some extension that is somehow related to my previous work with, with Richard Riemann, but uh, this is only beginning for the stuff for elliptic classes. Uh, uh, so I just uh, basically um, tell you what was uh, done with a uh, paper with Piotr Rudnicki, and, and then we will see how much time is left. Okay. Uh, so, um, what, what is uh, so? This is really we can start very elementary uh, that we have uh, square matrices, and the condition is that uh, for these matrices is x square equals zero. And I do not look like a theta, like um, a variety given by equation because we I would have unre not reduced maybe scheme. I rather look at it as a B orbit, orbit of the Borel group, and uh, look at the closures of Borel orbits. So the varieties are reduced by, by definition. Uh, and I would concentrate on the uh, orbits of the, this Borel group. Uh, okay, the action is by conjugation. If you conjugate matrix uh, with square equals zero, then you get again the matrix with square equals zero. And I would concentrate on the matrices that are upper triangular, they are preserved by this action. Um, but some, some uh, so this. Uh, uh, Upper triangular case was better already studied, but by, by several people. So I'll concentrate on that case, and uh, some possible extensions are are, are around, but uh, it's easier to to start with that case. So the the first non-trivial uh, is for the matrices of dimension three, uh, three time by three. So the upper triangular three by three matrix. It's a matrix with A, B, C here. And the condition of being square equals zero is A, C equals zero. So this is um, the free variable. So it looks like um, uh, two planes intersecting. And here you have zero and you have one orbit. Uh, the complement of this line uh, I'm sorry for my the clock, it's late. So the uh, three orbits of rank uh, one, two planes without a line, um, line without a point, and the point itself is a zero, it's a zero, the zero rank zero matrix. Okay, so, uh, and uh, why this, um, um, 
space of square zero matrices uh, is important. It contains a lot of information about the classical uh, stuff like uh, matrix Schubert varieties. Uh, if you have uh, matrix and um, that's K times L, not necessarily uh, square matrix, you can embed it uh, to a square matrices just as a block matrix. Uh, you can just make a block here and it automatically becomes a, a square zero matrix. And moreover, if you act on, uh, on this uh, by uh, Borel groups from one side, you act by, okay, by X, um, upper triangular and from other side by inverse of, of Z, uh, then this action uh, agrees with the action by conjugation. This is a simply simple, simple, simple calculus that um, conjug conjugating this matrix by upper triangular is the same as left and right action by, by Borel groups. Okay, so in, it follows that all what I'm saying will, will can be uh, applied in the classical context of matrix Schubert varieties. But maybe I would uh, prefer to, to say that this is an extension of the <clears throat> classical context. Okay, and the B orbits of square zero matrices were studied by Anna Melnikov, uh, quite a, I think in the 2000 something, 2005, maybe the paper appeared. And uh, it's really, really elementary that um, every orbit of uh, Borel group among the square zero matrices it contains a matrix that has only one, uh, one somewhere. Uh, only one in one column, only uh, at, at most one in one column or at most one in one uh, row. And in fact, uh, this matrix uh, is given uh, by some combinatorial data. For example, we can call it pattern or linking diagram. So here you have um, um, row two and one in the row six. So two is connected with six and the matrix in fact says that the sixth vector is sent to uh, the second vector and then the second vector says second basis vector to zero and also here uh, you have uh, another one in the seventh column seven is sent to four and four is sent to zero so the melnikov uh, have shown that uh, every orbit contains matrix of, of that shape and this matrix is unique and from this uh, combinatorial data this is just a set of uh, pairs set of disjoint pairs encoded in the diagram uh, from that you can easily uh, read the dimension of the orbit so this is the formula so this is first, um, R is the rank, rank which is uh, number of pairs. Uh, so it looks like a dimension of Grassmannian, but from, from that uh, you have to subtract the number of intersections. Here you have one intersection and also subtract the uh, you have some fixed points. This the, do, do, those who are not uh, not touched by by arcs. So we have uh, three, uh, one, five, eight, and over this each point you ask how many arcs you have above. So you have one, and you have above uh, two arcs passing over, and here you have zero. Uh, so maybe another method would be just to draw lines from this and uh, you could in that way you can uh, count a total number of intersections so in our case the the num the dimension would be uh, uh, n is eight so and the rank is two so two times eight uh, minus two 
and the number of intersection minus one. And there are, uh, there are three, uh, here you have one uh, arc passing over a fixed point and here you have two. So, so this is uh, two times six, that's 12 minus four, so that's eight. So it's easy to compute the dimension. Okay, mm, so maybe another example is the, so let's take n equals four. And uh, if uh, the matrix is of rank two, correspond to the following uh, patterns. Here you have uh, one, two, three, four. And uh, there's one is connected with three and two is connected with four. The other one is, the one is connected with four and two is connected with three. And the last one, uh, one is connected with two and two is connected with three. Okay, so the two rank two orbits and for the uh, rank one orbit, if you have one, for example, here, so you can show that uh, generating other matrices using um, Borel group, you can obtain every matrix uh, in, in this region. So you get uh, of this kind, provided this, this matrix is uh, of rank one, because the initial matrix was of rank one. So generating, uh, you, you still get rank one. Okay, uh, so maybe I, I got it wrong. So you can almost every matrix of rank one uh, obtain every almost every, but if you take a closure with the space of uh, singular matrices. Okay. And for the orbits of rank two, uh, maybe if you are interested in equations, so this uh, this two configurations uh, are uh, given by equations, uh, uh, just the rank conditions. So you can uh, find yourself what is the rank condition. If two, two rectangles overlap, then, then you can have uh, rank two and uh, otherwise it's rank one. And this, uh, this, uh, this configuration says that everything is contained in a rectangular, which is above, above the diagonal. And this is other case. And here uh, there is extra equality, ex extra, extra condition that this ma matrix, if you put here generic things, this matrix might be not uh, of square zero. For example, that one, you have A, B, C, D, E. And if you take a square, you get equation of this type. So this is the condition. Uh, so, uh, to make it short, it's in a paper of Anna Melnikov that uh, the equations are the equations of the closure of the orbit are uh, the ideal is generated by uh, rank conditions and uh, square zero, which is non-trivial for some configurations and for some uh, follow automatically. And there is a minimal, uh, for the fixed rank in fixed dimension, there is a minimal orbit and it looks like uh, this. It's minimal because it has maximal number of crossings and also maximal number of, you can say, bridges passing over the of, over this region. Every every arc is passing over that, and it corresponds to orbit that uh, here you have have to have to have zero, and there you. Um, the closure of the orbit is something just a linear space and the orbit itself is some is is a uh, consist of a matrices that here on this diagonal um, are non-zero entries okay and the the pattern is uh, i mean the matrix uh, the representative of the orbit it looks like that and then you generate okay 
And also there is an algorithm how to obtain a minimal orbit of the fixed rank by applying the uh, simple reflections. So the algorithm, algorithm uh, goes like this. That, uh, okay, so here you have uh, some configuration. So there is one uh, arc and another arc. And the rule goes like this. You have to, so there are several ways you can do it, but there's one, or at least one uh, canonical. Then first, move left legs to the left. So this is a left leg and this is a left leg. And you want to arrive to a position when the left leg is at position one and the second left leg is in the position two. So just move this uh, first, uh, first, first left leg, left leg is uh, in the good position. The second one you have to move. So you move and then you have to move the right legs. So this, uh, this uh, other one should be transported here. So you transport it uh, just applying uh, uh, simple transpositions and you arrive here. And somewhere on the way you have to uh, jump. I mean, you have to switch this, but that's, uh, the, 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 it has to happen somewhere if they were in a not good uh, order. Okay, so you, the right leg is on the second right leg in the, in the good position and then uh, first leg, right leg, you have to still move it a little bit. So you land up here. So this is kind of algorithm. You can do a similar algorithm, switching the role of left and right first to move right legs and, and then left. And still uh, there are a lot of uh, freedom. There are more possible uh, choices. In fact, uh, if you have this kind of pattern, uh, there are, I checked there are exactly three ways to, three different permutation that uh, conjugate this one to, to that one because you can consider this as the first arc, this is the second and this third, and then you have to skip there or, or other way around. You consider this as a third, this as the second, and this as the first. So you have to skip with this on the left side or there's another way that is some, some, something in the middle. Uh, so the algorithms combination of the between the finding the uh, canonical presentation of the permutation, but uh, also some 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 uh, positions uh, you, you you can simplify. Okay. So as I said, the singularities of these varieties are for us not. Uh, I mean, we, we work with singularities but uh, for matrix uh, Schubert varieties, we know that Cohen Macaulay, for this, I, I'm not sure, at least in, at the, in the type C, uh, there's counter, counter example, but at least the singularities are rational and um, there is um, resolution. So I will tell about the resolution in a moment, but first I have to recall uh, the, uh, standard thing that for the G orbits, uh, nilpotent G orbits, you have a um, standard resolution, uh, at least in type E. Uh, so if you have a matrix uh, with square zero, so um, uh, from this matrix, you can extract its image. So if this matrix of rank R, the, the image is the subspace of uh, of Frank of dimension R, so it defines a, an element of the Grassmannian. So from A matrix A, you 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 obtain a, a element of the Grassmannian, and to determine this matrix completely, you have to have a map from C n to the image from C n to the image, but the square equals zero implies that the map vanishes on the image. 
that's why you have a map from the quotient uh, cn by the image to the image so image is the tautological bundle and uh, exactly this uh, this guy is a um, uh, cotangent cotangent bundle so that's why you have a smooth resolution even a symplectic resolution of the uh, g orbit nilpotent g orbit and uh, we are interested not in g orbit but in the borel orbit so still the borel groups it's uh, borel equivariant so borel group acts on that on that resolution and uh, this orbit uh, is sent to some schubert uh, schubert uh, cell here downstairs so it's easy to to guess that you need to resolve this uh, schubert cell and finally you arrive to a problem of resolving some bundle over schubert cell and uh, quite recently appeared the um, a paper of Bender Perrin, uh, just uh, with a um, full description of this kind of resolution for the square zero matrices. And for the type ADE, everything uh, works fine. But I would just concentrate on the type, type uh, A. So the uh, what is the uh, algo what is the algorithm? Uh, so the statement is that um, you take the minimal orbit. So this is a minimal orbit. Orbit of Frank R. And I already told you that this is a matrix uh, set of matrices of that form. So this is vector space. So it's smooth. Uh, maybe I should say it for the type uh, B, C. Uh, uh, and and yes, G, F. So this might be non-smooth. So we would have to resolve it. Uh, it's an, another another step to to do. But for the type E, it's a vector space, and then uh, resolve like you resolve the Schubert varieties. So this is so you obtain a construction of both Samuelson resolution. So then you get. Uh, bundle over bot Samuelson resolution written that way that is iterated uh, twisted product of uh, of minimal parabolic so this is standard maybe i don't have to recall it here so anyway this resolution is of the form uh, of the bundle over bot Samuelson uh, over bot Samuelson um, uh, variety uh, and when this uh, pi is something that uh, pi times uh, minimal uh, orbit is the, the orbit that we are interested in. Okay, so maybe I can stop now because now I would uh, move to to more homological part. The the first was just a description of the situation, the geometric situation, and then I would move to the cohomological invariant. So let's make a five minutes break. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Any questions before the break? All right. If there are no questions, let's take a break for five minutes. Okay.